take on this Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, one and all. All right, joining us right now, this man played 11 seasons in the NFL, former Eagle, and does an awesome job just breaking all of it down. And you can follow him on Twitter at Gary Cobb, G-A-R-R-Y Cobb. G, what's up, my man? How you doing? Big dog. How you feeling, sir? Doing good. How you all doing? Doing well. good. Now you you were at the Super Bowl. You you were out there in Vegas, man. Yeah, I was out there. You know, I you know uh, because uh, you know some of the things I do with the NFL and everything uh, with a lot of really former players. We try to help former players, uh, the young guys that come out. You know, a guy comes in, he gets released, and some of them, you know, they uh, might cry for a few few days, <laughs> and they got to get up. They got to get on. So we help guys uh, get their act together and help some young players and things when they're having challenges. So, uh, so I go out there, we have uh, big parties and we have all the guys come in and talk to them and let everybody have a good time. And, you know, we, uh, really the NFL does a lot of that with um, Troy Vincent really is uh, the head uh, of a lot of th the, those things. In fact, we talked to those about some of the things when uh, I was covering the Eagles in the locker room, but, um, but that's what I was out there for, you know, uh, get a chance to see everybody and of course everybody's giving their opinion about what's going to happen and you know so it's a, it's a good time because you, you see everybody i mean right there's no telling who you see walk by you you, know, you have, give us by. give us a star sighting give us somebody you saw man a big name ah uh, who would i say um well um usher oh okay. yeah you know usher was he was out there and uh and some of the uh, artists that uh, were on there with him, you know, like I say, at the hotel, you're like, wait a minute, was that Usher? <laughs> yeah, that was Usher just walked by, you know. So um, you see those guys, and then also, call, of course, all of the former players. Right. Uh, you you see some of the guys, you know, that as I, I you know, that I grew up watching as a kid, you know, uh, uh, one of the guys, you know, Jan Stenerud. He was, yeah, the kicker. Yeah. Yeah, the kicker was out there. And, of course, all of the Kansas City people, you know. Right. They're out there and they're making noise. And uh, it came out on top again. My goodness. And, and you know, great game, man. Oof. Great game. You know, and, and you see the pain in the uh, – Oh. The San Francisco people, boy, that was a painful loss. Yeah, I feel so bad for them. I, I'm, I'm still shedding tears for the San Francisco people. But, <laughs> gee, you, you, you're an historian of this game. I'll, let's just stay there for a minute. You know, what mm -hmm. Mahomes is doing, he's got three already, and he's been to four, and he's 28 years old. I, I mean, just kind of put it in perspective what we're seeing here with this guy. Amazing. You know, I played against one of the guys that, uh, that you have on that list, which is Montana. Right. You know, we went out there. I was playing with Detroit, and uh, you know, to see Detroit go down again, because we were out in San Francisco, 1983. You know, we had a good defense, and boy, we got them beat. You know, I'm the right up back on the field goal team, so I'm I'm in there. Yeah. Eddie Murray, best kicker in the game. Hmm. All we do is kick this field goal. Bye bye, San Francisco. You guys are going home. We're marching on. Right. He missed the field goal. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I, I thought you were gonna I say he you know, he know, made it. You left my time to, much time to go down the field. I thought it was gonna be yeah, one of those. Deals. Yeah, it, no, it, no. that was painful. But anyway, um, yeah. Wait, what did you ask? Uh, the, what 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 Holmes is doing now? Just put it in perspective oh, with how. Well, incredible. you know, uh, he's a special player. Yeah, because he can play the game from the pocket, mm -hmm. and what he's having to do now is he has to ad lib a lot of plays because you know th their talent is not. It, you know, in their receivers isn't as much as it was, of course, when they had the little that little burner running Every off kill. all over the yeah. place. But um, but you see how he's got that basketball in him because you know, you know, a, a great point guard or or just a great guy with the ball who's a great decision maker. That's what he is. He's a great decision maker. So he knows that if I go, I'm gonna draw this guy up, I'm gonna throw the ball over his head. Or you know, uh, I, I know where everybody is. He's got like a feel, like he's got eyes in the back of his head. He knows the guy's chasing him over here. I mean, you're going like, man, this guy really ticks me off. You know, if you're playing against him, <laughs> you're going, man, if I get a good shot, a blindside shot on him, I I'm knocking him into the ozone somewhere, man. But he just got a great feel for the game. And, you know, I got to give the kid credit, uh, Purdy, man. He, 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 did, he played well, but. He played well, yeah. 
But Dago Mahomes was the difference. You know, he, he just is able to play both from the pocket and he got to keep and he can ad lib and he does them just as well. And the thing he does, you know, amazingly, he threw an interception. I was going like, <laughs> wow, we need to get a picture of that. He finally <laughs> threw an interception He's in a championship game yeah. Yeah. because he takes care of the football. Mm -hmm. He makes the right decision. He's cool under fire the whole time it just yeah. seems like he, he's got everything in control like when they had that fourth down of course everybody's sweating he knows keep the ball you know and, and the thing about him is you know different unless they like he can run brady couldn't run right he can run and he, he you know, well we know last year he killed, he killed the eagles that. running it yeah he did I'm like oh you yep. know you want to go in there and get a shot at him man but the guy is uh, just a great player. Uh, he's very accurate with his throws. He can throw from the pocket or he can be on the run. And he's got a great feel for the game. And, you know, I, I know uh, some people don't, don't like Andy and everything. <laughs> but you got to give Andy credit. He saw he saw it in him. And that's why he went after him. And, you know, it's a great move. I mean, it's, it's a, a, um, a franchise-making move to get a guy like that and he can win whatever you need. You can, you know, he's like a cook. You give him whatever you want and he comes out and he's got great food. He cooks. <laughs> 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 I mean, because, because he can win with, you know, where you, you've got, you know, great receivers, but maybe you don't have any receivers. Mm. Maybe the line is a little shaky. You know, maybe you don't have a running game. He seems like he can make up for all of it. And that's why, you know, He's definitely going down as one of the best, I, you know, because he makes it look like a piece. It's a piece of cake and right. everything's on the line. You know, you know, the way that stadium was that that was a great game because mm -hmm. everybody's sitting on the edge of their seats. And it's like he's going like, OK, this is my time. He just takes it over. Clockwork. Like masterpiece. He's, you know, some genius. But he's he's got he's got a great feel for the game. He's got a great arm. He's faster than you think he is. Uh, all of it. He just and he he does whatever it is, and, and it looked like it was easy for him for them to march down. They're going like, "This is easy," you know. Mm. That's what it looked like. Uh, they're watching the game, man. And like I said, you know, uh, you you get around him. He's he's a down to earth guy, so he's not tripping. So the guys like playing with him. You know, you don't you don't see all of that when. Um, you're talking about quarterbacks and that he's been able to keep it under. I know he's got some crazy stuff going on with his brother and all right. that. Kind oh. of stuff. But, um, you know, he's got all the pieces and chances are God might have to deal with him again next year. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know, G. Cobb, it's funny. You said something earlier about, hey, listen, you need somebody that's going to take a shot at him, right? Well, you know, uh, when you think about the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, they have a guy on their roster that's t that tends to get a shot on everybody in Hassan Reddick. And uh, right now they're going through a bit of a contract um, debacle. I'm curious to know, just, you know, just at face value, uh, what were your um, what were your thoughts when that news came across the wire on Super Bowl Sunday? I uh, wasn't surprised. I mean, you got to you got to know the Eagles. And this is where, you know, see, you guys haven't been a player. When they drafted Nolan Smith, you better believe Hassan Reddick goes, okay, because he's very much like Hassan, see? Mm. And you see how they really wanted him, and they even talked about having him play behind him and everything, see? So they they really, you know, now, now he was really, he didn't do as much as they wanted him to, you know, and maybe a lot of people expected a lot more in his first year. But Nolan Smith was their replacement for Hassan Reddick. So they wouldn't have to give him a new contract, you know. And uh, right now, because Nolan Smith hasn't done very much, of course, people will make some noise if they were not to re-sign him. Or, well, I, but I, I, see, I still see, I think that they see the potential in Hassan Reddick, and they see a lot of Hassan Reddick in Nolan Smith. And that's why they drafted him. And, um, you know, these undersized pass rushers, you see, he fits right in that scheme. And so 
I, I wasn't shocked when they said, hey, go ahead and, you know, see what's out there. Because I think in the long term, you know, you're going to get Nolan Smith probably. And um, if Hassan were to hold out or anything, I, I don't know that they're going to give on him. Because like I said, you know, and, and really as a player, if you see somebody, <laughs> they draft a guy who is just like you, you know that's your replacement. Yeah, the writing's on the wall. They're thinking yeah. they, at least, yeah. you know, but we'll see how it goes. But I, I, I don't, I don't think that they, um, you know, they have a formula, and I don't think giving him more money is part of that formula. You know. So, so gee, I guess my follow-up would be: if you let him walk, you, you're you're going to be banking on a lot of unproven guys. Nolan Smith got one sack last year. Yeah, <clears> yeah I they know, may but- draft a guy, but. Like that's you're, I, I, you're already I hurting. You're gonna defense. let him walk. Um, yeah, you already got him signed. Yeah, he's got one so, more year left. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's either they get some uh, picks for him, or he's gonna be here playing. You know, he might not be thrilled about his deal, but I don't. I you know I I, I could see them. Um, now what they could do is they could give him some money, give him some additional money and and add some years to his deal. And and that's probably where they're headed. Um, That's probably where you got the middle ground like that. That's probably what you'll end up doing. But um, I don't think they want to see him go. They know Nolan Smith isn't as far along as they hoped he would be. So, you know, they still need Hassan Reddick. They they need, I mean, uh, with the disappointment, disappointing year that, um, you had on the other side. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think he's going to leave, but I think that they are, it's going to get pressed, meaning they're not just going to give in to him though. Mm. It, it's going to take a while to get resolved. And you see that the pressure is on uh, Hassan. He's going out looking for teams and everything. So, um, but, but their, their long-term plan is Nolan Smith. Mm. That's their long-term plan, but short-term, I think they'll end up working something out where they give them some more money and add a couple, you know, phony years. You know how they add those phony years at the end. <laughs> yeah. You know, G, G Kyle, I, I got to ask you this, right? Because I think if we all had to guess, you know, Hassan Reddick is looking for something north of $20 million. I mean, he's been super productive the past uh, four years. He's been really productive in Philadelphia. Right. Um, many believe he's outperformed his contract. And, you know, you, you know, you can't really argue with the results. I mean, 11 sacks, 11 sacks in 10 games. I mean, 19 and a, 19 and a half sacks in 2022. If you count um, regular season and playoffs, dude has been dynamic um, yes. as far as a pet, as far as pass rushing goes. But again, north of $20 million, that's Miles Garrett, TJ Watt territory. And I'm curious to know, do you think he's, you know, relatively in that category or close to it? Well, his numbers have been, uh, but um, you know, you, you guys made a good point, which we're talking about his size wise. He's not one of those big guys. And where they look at a guy who um, they feel if he were to lose a step or two, he wouldn't be the same player. So mm-hmm. I don't think they'll be as quick, you know, to give him those kind of dollars. Uh, but I, I would have to say um, he's going to wind up kind of in the middle where they'll give him not quite to the 20 million, but let's say he gets up and he's up in 17, 17.5, mm-hmm. you know, where they kind of meet him in the middle. I think ultimately that's what will probably happen. Um, because, you know, he's not one of those big guys. He's totally reliant on his quickness and speed and everything. And at a certain point that leaves, you know, and I think the, they're, they're probably more guarded because of what happened last year, you know, with, uh, with Bradbury, you know, mm-hmm. they see what we, well, you know, we gave a great Bradbury point the money. way he fell off. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be more guarded probably, you know, with the, with, with the guys. And especially if something happens the year before, you know, they, they get more guarded. And then let's say after a couple of years, some of the older guys are doing well, then they'll loosen up a little bit. Gee, let me ask you, what, what would be your, uh, let's just stay on the defense for a minute. What would be your biggest priority for this team in the off season, whether it's trade free agent draft, what, what position are you targeting first? Well, you know, I, I really would like to see that, you know, I think that they, they, um, you know, I, I really tell you, I just kind of fell in love with what I'm seeing with Kansas City and their secondary. Mm, yeah. yeah. Dang. You mm-hmm. know, um, so I, I would be looking for, you know, uh, guys who are interchangeable, who 
are, you know, okay. I mean, they, they, they're really safeties, but th that you can ask them to do things and they're willing to go up and hit, you know, and they can run. Uh, I think that's where the league is at now, that you need guys that are interchangeable, but you need those type of guys who can play some corner, but who are willing to tackle. I am just through with guys don't want to tackle anybody. It's, it's, it's tackle football. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Kansas City, because they have guys who are willing to tackle, they 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 uh, keep the quarterback guessing. He's not sure what he's throwing into. Uh, they disguise their coverages. They will blitz their corners off the um, off the slot a lot. You know, uh, if they get a chance. And uh, the thing that they're able to do is they can use a multitude of coverages. Uh, and you know, with what the Eagles are going to be playing defensively, you know, you need guys that are in the secondary that are willing to tackle. So. Uh, I would be looking at, you know, they probably are going to be looking at the corner position. They would like to have somebody out there that is a special player that they can leave out there and be comfortable. Uh, at the same time, they want to, um, I would want to get uh, talent at the safety position, you know, guys who are interchangeable. That's the big thing I'd be looking for, those interchangeable guys who are willing to tackle. And um, uh, because... If I look at the uh, D line, you know they've invested a lot in that D line. So I, I, I think corner now because mm -hmm. they know Slay is is get doesn't have much time left. Uh, I don't know about Bradbury whether he'll be back or not. So I'd say corner is probably where they're going to go at the top of the draft. But I, I still would like to see them get some quality uh, safeties. Um, you know, uh, get guys that are multi talented and interchangeable because really now. They come up and they're playing linebacker too at times, you know, but you got to have guys that can run, who can cover and are willing to tackle. Mm. Uh, you know, I, and I um, really want to see them improve on that because I saw times last year where the Eagles, the Eagles secondary, other than Mary, uh, who 32. Uh, Blankenship and, you know, and Blankenship Brown were the two guys who were willing people, to hit. Yeah. Yep. Maybe a, a couple other guys. Guys not really want to tackle. Look, as much as I like Slate, you know, I know you don't want to be called Darius and all that. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't call you Darius. You'll be willing to tackle, man. You, you got to tackle. That's part of the game. You got to tackle people. Business decisions, G. Business. That's, that's, yeah. a, a, that's a good point, G. Kyle. I mean, you know, it's it's funny. You know, when you think about all the needs the Philadelphia Eagles have on that side of the ball, right? You know, it, you, it obviously makes you think about, you know, Hassan Reddick, you know, them, they can't dedicate but so much money to him because they know they have to really fill out, uh, you know, really fill out that defense. You know, because of this contract negotiation with Reddick, you know, we have to consider the fact that he may not be here and, you know, in the season. So let me ask you this. I know we talked about Nolan Smith, but who outside of Nolan Smith, who in your opinion has to step up in such a way where this Philadelphia Eagles defense can be built around them? Who has to be the bona fide game wrecker? the bona fide closer on this defense going forward if Hassan Reddick is to leave the building? I don't know what happened last year with Josh Sweat. I was very disappointed in him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I he was a guy who uh, we didn't we didn't hear enough from him. Now, he plays the entire game. I like the, the previous years in the fact that he plays the run and the pass. Yeah. Uh, but he's very dis I was very disappointed in him last year. I don't know whether he was hurt or whatever it was. But if, if I were the GM – uh, Josh Sweat and I will have a talk. We got to have a conversation. Yeah. Close the door, you know. Uh, you know. Well, you know, G. Cobb, real quick. I mean, he yeah. had he, this year. He had a career high in snaps. I think he had about 850 snaps, and he typically hangs around that 600 range. Yeah, 600 low 700 range. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I think the lack of depth really really took a toll on him, especially this season. It, it probably did, but uh, you know he he just the drop off, you know. Yeah. And maybe maybe you're right um, that they need to watch that uh, more carefully, and and that means you know you get um, Smith and some of those other guys on the field, but um, got to get a better year out of uh, out of Josh Sweat. Agreed. Um, you know we'll see what's happening with Hassan Reddick. Of course, you'd love to have him back, and I, and I think they'll probably be able to work it out. I don't think that. There are going to be people all over the league coming after Hassan. You talk about twenty million. You know, even though you know if he could find somebody, you know, I've seen you know the GMs do that. Um, but we'll see how that works out. But they, they got to get. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, trying to think of who else comes on. Well, you know, it's really uh, the the big boys inside. 
we, I would have meetings with them too. You got to get more out of them. You know, they got to come in in better shape. You're expecting them to be leaders of the defense. You know, they got to talk to them about that, that they need them. Look, we didn't draft you guys in the first round because we wanted you guys to just be out here standing around. We, we don't want you on the side. When the game's on the line, we expect you to be in the game and we expect you to be making plays. That's why we brought you here. We didn't bring you here to stand around. And I'd have the same talk, you know, with Nolan Smith. They got to push these guys. They got to grow up. And they've got to step in. And, and they've got to start taking positions because you don't know what's going to go on with Fletcher Cox. You know, he might be gone. They got to assume his position. It means you got to step up. When the game's on the line, you guys got to be making plays. You don't be looking for somebody else to. You are the one. I mean, you're a number one pick. So – they got to have some those kind of conversations with those players. And, you know, a good organization will have talks with guys and that they are, you know, and they have been growing. And, you know, Fletcher, I've seen him talking to them and everything. Hopefully they have listened to what he was saying and they're ready to grow up and assume a position of leadership. You know, and that means you start off, you know, really nobody wants to hear what you have to say if you're not making any plays. Mm -hmm. So you got to make some plays in order to say anything. Because if you're not making any plays, everybody say, "Man, shut up! You ain't doing nothing." Mm -hmm. You know, so they gotta they gotta start up and they they gotta they gotta start stepping up. Me, and, you know, I'm talking about, uh, you know, Jalen, uh, um, Carter, Davis, yeah, uh, that's Nolan right. Smith, yeah, Nicobe we, we Dean. Gotta, we gotta hear from those guys. They gotta step up because that's why they were brought in here. They're supposed to be, you know, the elite, and they gotta start playing like the elite. They gotta step into positions, and that's why if um, if uh, Hassan Reddick were to go. Nolan Smith, that's why we brought you here. I don't know what you're looking at. You're looking, you gotta, you gotta assume we want you coming off that corner. Yeah, you know, mm. and um that's the way it is. Like when I was out there at the Super Bowl, this is the way the guys talk. This is the way, you know, unfortunately, I don't have any rings. The guys that have rings, this is the way their organization is, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, guy I played with at USC, Ronnie Lott. Now, this is the way it was at USC. When somebody left out, they talked about that. And, and he talked about the way it was with the Niners. That's the way it was. Meaning, like, we, we're not aiming. Look, we brought you in here. We didn't bring you in here just to be standing around, you know. And they start, you start getting on that. The, the teammates, the other leaders on the team, start getting on that guy if he's not stepping up and realizing this is why we brought you in here. And the guy's got the talent. But some guys need to be pushed. Mm. And, Gee, and let, let me ask you, guys. Um, how big a fix, <clears throat> excuse me, in your opinion, is Jalen Hurts? Is it just tweak? Is it a little bit more of an overhaul? What do you think about getting him back on track like he played in 22? Well, you know, I, I think that unfortunately it, um, you know, the the, uh, the move last year, you know, uh, with the uh, offensive coordinator and everything, you know, all that didn't work out and everything. And, you know, Jalen had a tough year and I really blame um, Nick for that because I don't think they prepared and realized that everybody was looking at them and everybody was working all off season to stop them because they had a big year. And if you are the, the team that it goes to the Super Bowl, everybody circles you. They're going to make sure we got to beat these guys. We got to stop what they're doing. So they didn't really make it. They weren't ready for the adjustment. And then when they made the adjustment, they're going, they were adjusted. Hello. <laughs> Hello. What? What? The you know, but so uh, this time around, you know, they've got to, um, you know, see how, what do they want out of Jalen? They need to be telling him. And, you know, of course, Kellen Moore is going to be the one kind of working with him. You know, do they want, you know, to continue to run, you know, the um, the RPO style of, of offense? Or are they going to get away from that? Uh, are, are, do they think they can develop uh, Jalen to the point to where he's taking the check down? He hasn't gotten into that field where he will just take what the defense gives you and he's patient and uh, he could just play in the game from the pocket. You know, do they want to have him just playing the game from the pocket or how much running do they want him to do? Chances are they want, they want him to still continue to use his legs because it's a weapon, which you really can't game plan for, you know, and so they still have that there, but they've got to be able to expand the offense to where they have certain things they can go to regardless of what the other team is doing. And, and there are things they can go to. And, you know, for instance, in, uh, in the Super Bowl, 
that dog on Andy Reid ran the same play that beat the Eagles. He ran mm -hmm. the same play mm -hmm. against it was like corn play. dog. Corn dog, he calls it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where they fake motion across and these stupid DBs, uh, not all DBs are stupid. A lot of them are. Mm. <laughs> what are you doing? You guys take your eyes off of the guy that's going in motion. And then when you take your eye off him, he goes back and is wide open. They throw the ball to him. Everybody starts celebrating. Same play. The Eagles messed it up twice where the guy's wide open. And then you have a situation where the doggone 49ers do the exact same thing. And with the whole season on the line, they run the same play, and the guy is still just as open. Uh, but what they've got to do is uh, the Eagles have got to decide on what they want Jalen to do. And they've got to, um, I guess, Kellen and Jalen need to be meeting now. Mm -hmm. They probably are. And decide what they want to do. And Jalen's got to give input. He's going to ask him what he likes. What do you like out of these series of plays? How do you like this? You know, they could look at other quarterbacks, other offenses, and borrow things that they're doing. But Jalen's got to give his input. And, uh, you know, they need, they need a, be a much better season out of him. And, you know, they're going to be communicating. And so uh, uh, Jalen um, is going to be given all of his uh, input. And those two are going to have to work together. And they're going to have to do a lot better than he did with Brian. Mm. So that's, that's going to be – that's this uh, this whole franchise is really dependent on that. Yeah, you know, G. Cobb, real quick, if I if I can sneak this in, right? You know, you kind of said something really interesting: the fact that they need to decide what they want from Jalen Hurts. Do you think that was pretty much the problem in twenty twenty three? The fact that it seemed like he was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. He seemed hesitant to run, but at the same time, he was trying to run. But then it just seemed like the offense was very torn between who they wanted to be, and they really couldn't establish their identity. Hence why the league kind of caught up with them. Well, you know, uh, you know, I don't know everything I feel like, but when I'm looking at organizations, you know, I feel this probably was between Jalen and Nick Sirianni. Mm -hmm. See, cause Nick Sirianni was really the one ultimately saying, okay, do this and do that. Even he could step in and um, overrule Brian Johnson, you know, uh, he, he, he could do that. And so I think that the, that the Jalen got to the point where he did not like that offense, did not like – there were too many uh, strict things. You see that they did not adjust well to the blitz. You could see him over there on the on the bench, and I've seen guys like that. He was pissed. Mm -hmm. He was angry at what they were doing, and I think they lost him. And with losing him, I think you lost the whole team. You know, uh, they, mm. the guys weren't really on board with, uh, with what they were doing, and – with, with the way things were, with the poor adjustment to blitz, no adjustment, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. how, how could everybody, why is everybody going downfield and they got a free blitzer coming and, and, and he's running for his life? You know, um, he's got to do a better job of, of somehow communicating to, it to the uh, coaches, but they, they've got to do a better job. They got to get him on board. I don't think last year, I think they lost Jalen Hurts where he really didn't believe in what they were doing. Uh, mm -hmm. That was all his body language over on the bench, everything. It's like he he wasn't happy with the offense. And I can that's understandable, but you got to do a better job of communicating, meaning they got to sit down and talk it out. And you got to do things that he's happy with, and it's got to be effective. It's not working. Uh, you lose everybody. And I, I don't think uh, the, 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 the receivers were really crazy about it either. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that's probably um, some of the people that uh, – that the, the Jeffrey Laurie and Howie Roseman probably met with those guys because they're really the core of the team. They're they're more the core of the team than Nick Suriani is. You know, Jalen, AJ Brown, um, and of course uh, Smith. Devante. Yeah, yeah, Devontae. They're the core of the team. You know, and then you could throw in uh, you could throw Dallas in there too. Um, you got to meet with those guys, and if they're not happy with what's being done, then you got to change it. And I, that's probably what happened. Gee, last one for me. On you, you brought up Ronnie Lott, and you you were a great player at USC. Just for people who may not know, throw some names out there, guys you played with at USC. Like you, you played with some heavy hitters, man. Like mm. Hall of Fame. Yeah, and, and they they were all at the Super Bowl, and so that's why you know it's kind of yeah, like yeah. a reunion when they go there. Of course, Ronnie was on the team. Uh, Anthony Munoz. Mm. You know Marcus Allen. Oh. 
you know, those, those, those are the three, you know, those guys, um, of course, all uh, Hall of Famers and everything. But, you know, Clay Matthews was on the team, you know, uh, his brother, uh, Bruce, Bruce Matthews. Yeah. Um, Damn, that's a lot of Hall of Famers, man. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we had a we had a we had a great, great team. We had some great players. And the big thing, though, is that um, nobody was babied when you came in there. Everybody tell you, look, you better get in line and do your job. Uh, the older guys would tell you, and you know, you you build that system, and that's what has to be there if you want to win. And on the pro level, it's the same way. You have to have guys who are willing to uh, put the team first, and and yet they're going to be responsible for making sure they know what they're supposed to do. They're ready to do their job. Uh, if they have to play injured sometime, they're capable of doing that. You know, and everything is about winning. It's not about uh, you know everything else is going to come along with it if you do win. So. Right. You know, you have that kind of environment, but but we had a lot of guys. Some of the guys I probably don't even uh, don't even mention as much, but we had a lot of uh, of great players that um, played on there. I know uh, Dennis Smith. Like, in fact, when uh, Marcus was recruited in his freshman year, they brought him in. He was the safety, and um, we couldn't. He, there's no way he could play though because we uh, Dennis Smith, who played for years with with Denver, Denver, yeah, he was one of the safeties, and Ronnie Lott was the other one. So we're going like, well. You're not going to beat either one of those guys out. So let's see. We got to find a place for you to play. And he okay. played fullback, right? Yeah. We, in the beginning. They, they, he's they, not they, built they like played a fullback because they yeah. let they get some snaps. They got some snaps in it. And then eventually, of course, he moved on to tailback. Yep. Mm. Uh, but originally, we came here. He, he couldn't play. We didn't have any place for him to play. And uh, that's where, you know, uh, a lot of the guys were there where we had great players backing up other great players. And, um, you know, the guy would have to wait his turn. And, that ain't happening but, now, man. The guys would have been transferring left and right now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. You're right. The guys are transferring all over the place and everything. Uh, but you know, we think back. Of course, when you go to the Super Bowl, we're telling jokes and laughing and everything, and yeah. uh, having a good time and everything. Uh, but uh, you, you really uh, appreciate a lot of the guys you play with, and you know, because I've sat back and go, man, I never knew, man, Dad, on such and such was, you know, as good as he was, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 he blossomed. The, the guy kept working and you know, became even better player than he was when he was there with us. So that you, you, you uh, take your hat off to those guys, you know, and of course they're all walking around with their, uh, with their gold jackets, <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, but, but they're, they're good guys and everything. So we have, we have some good laughs and talking and stuff and uh, seeing how everybody's doing. So I, you know, I always uh, enjoy going to a Super Bowl because you see those guys and, and uh, have some laughs and everything. And then we kind of have a, a text group, where, you know, we're talking about during the game, you know, guys are talking on, on the phone and stuff. So we, we have a good time, good guy, a good time together. And a lot of those guys are just as good a people as they were football players. That's right. what you, you really appreciate about them. You know, good yeah. people. No, yeah. Gee, so are you, man. We appreciate a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, as always, Thank follow you. him at Gary Cobb uh, on Twitter. Catch him on Fox doing his work as well. Gee, thanks for, for a couple minutes, man. Thank you, My sir. We appreciate you as always. Uh, yes, right. sir. I had I ran into some, you know, Eagles fans out there, of course. They still got the Eagles stuff on and everything. Did, yes. uh, hey, right, we G. will return. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right, sir. G, be good. Thanks, man. All right. Thank Take you, sir. Easy. That is G Cobb uh, right there. Good insights from G as always. Always, right. always. We're going to come back. We're going to look at strengths, weaknesses, and questions uh, for the Eagles this season. We'll do that when we get back. Don't go anywhere. Tone to Shields, Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take. All right, time for me to tell you about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because knowing who to trust with your finances can be so, so challenging, right? And I found the right person, and that's Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group. And, you know, whether it's retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, you might have a small business, you're trying to get employee benefits off the ground, or if you're just not sure about something, Jim is the per perfect person to talk to. He can help you with any of those. Uh, I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be as well. Give him a call, 610-996-4751, 610-996-4751. You could also email him as well, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray, dot Jim at principal.com.